morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm really excited to be able to um, bring to you another webinar on this Friday. Um, and as Jeff had mentioned, our topic today is on assistive technology. Um, I also want to mention real quick um, that we do have another webinar uh, scheduled for this next Tuesday and um, again on Friday of this next week. So this next week, we're gonna have uh, webinars on the 17th and the 20th, and we're hoping that you folks will um, you know, register for those, acquire the links, and we look forward to being able to uh, see you then as well. Um, and so without any further ado, I'd like to be able to offer the fact that we have um, Clayton um, Guffey and Heidi um, Lurvik here with us um, from ASTEP and they are coming to us, um, you know, on their the main campus is um, at NAU and they come to us from Phoenix. So um, thank you so much for joining us today and for presenting this um, important information um, to the both of you. Um, we know this is all very, very um, relevant and important for um, the populations of folks that we're working with. And I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to share with us. And again, thank you also to our interpreters for being here to assist us. So Clayton. And I think you were on mute. All right, good morning, everybody. Sorry, my mouse wasn't moving as fast as I needed to be. So let me bring up my slides here. All right, well, I appreciate this opportunity to be able to speak to you all today. Um, Wendy, in the title of this presentation, uh, really said it all. Technology is everywhere in our lives. Uh, what Heidi and I are going to focus on today are specific types of technology that uh, persons with disabilities or special challenges use to accomplish tasks or do everyday things. Um, both Heidi and I are with the Arizona Technology Access Program. I'm the program director. Heidi, would you like to introduce yourself? Good morning, and I'm Heidi Lurvik. I'm uh, one of the assistive technology specialists here at ASTAP. So you may ask, what is ASTAP? What are we and what do we do? We're essentially Arizona's resource or assistance program in regards to assistive technology. We're part of Northern Arizona University and we're part of the Institute for Human Development up on campus, but our main office is located in Phoenix. We serve the entire state of Arizona out of our main Phoenix office. So what is assistive technology or AT? Assistive technology is devices, items, softwares, things that enhance the capabilities of a person with a disability or some type of special challenge. It can really be anything that's helpful to that person. And we're gonna talk about and show some examples of assistive technology today. Assistive technology really needs to be individualized to the person and their disabilities or their needs. Something that works for me may not work for you or vice versa. So it's really dependent on the person. It needs to be based on their needs, individualized to them. Assistive technology needs to be task or activity based. You really need to look at what you want to accomplish if it's reading on the computer or if it's reading a print document or something like that. You may need different types of technology to do those separate tasks. So it's really focused on the task or the activity that you need to do. Assistive technology can be very simple low tech things to very complex systems or things that you put together. So there's a whole range of, of, of assistive technology from simple to complex out there. 
One of the main questions is, is really starting to think about how assistive technology can be worked into your existing employment or your return to work plan if you're not working. How can you plan for it? So that's what we're going to try to accomplish today. But we want to give you some examples of assistive technology, some things that people will use either at work or school or both to help them be more successful. And remember, this isn't everything that's available, but it's a few of the major things that are out there um, that people could find helpful. So, Heidi. Heidi, you'll need to unmute too, so. Yep, yeah. so, all right, need to share. The screen. I apologize, I've had issues all morning. All right, Heidi, we're seeing the um, the, the oh. camera view. All right. I see. Are you not finding are you not finding the camera view on your share your screen option? Yeah, it's it is not. Can't, I can't, for some reason, you're, you are coming up and it's not sharing. Okay. Um, So we see your desktop now. You are seeing the computer desktop, yeah. Wow. So Heidi, change the change the camera under your video, I think to your webcam. Yeah, and I did that. Uh-huh. And it still did not turn. <laughs> so now I'm like. So Heidi, under share screen, did it bring up the webcam as an option? No, it's not. And I don't know why it's not. I can't even, it won't even pull up. And I had it working fine this morning. So I don't know if I need to have. Is there something that one of us are able to do if you email something like a um, uh, No, I've, I've got a, a separate camera for the equipment to show. Uh-huh. 
So Thank you all for your patience while working to figure this piece out. It's much appreciated. It'll be worth your while once we get here. I don't know why this is not. All right. While Heidi is fixing this, one thing that I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of jump in, and I'm curious as to um, the audience here, um, you folks that are with us, do you want to share in the chat maybe um, any of the assistive uh, the assistive technologies that maybe you folks have um, utilized and found to be helpful in your own lives? Um, if um, any of you want to either add that in the chat or feel free to uh, raise your hand. Um, we would love to hear from you. I heard Noah, uh, Noah in the chat said, what is that? So Noah, are you asking us what is assistive technology? Yeah, subtitles, the captioning, that can always be very, very helpful for sure. You're absolutely right. Um, that way we can see all of what's taking place and um, understand uh, whatever we're viewing. Uh, there are times that I'll put on the captioning even when watching TV, especially if I'm like multitasking. That way I'm able to kind of have another way to be able to follow along and when we're in webinars such as this, it can be helpful for the same reason to be able to uh, have that, that captioning. The ability to repair electronic devices. Yeah, um, that's pretty important. It's nice that we have places that we're able to rely on um, within the community to assist us with those type things. But it is important that if we're gonna have assistive technology that we know how to use it. Um, otherwise, it's not going to be of assistance. And um, in my past working as a VR counselor, one thing that I had um, discovered was we can often hook um, clients up with assistive technology, but unless they have the training to go along with it, um, that's not going to be very helpful. So we would be sure to also um, connect folks with training so they understood how to use what they were, um, what they had acquired. We have somebody that offered here uh, reminders and schedule alerts. So yes, um, any type of assistive technology that's gonna offer us reminders is so very important. Um, actually, that's next Tuesday's webinar is going to be about apps and programs that are available um, to assist us in our lives, whether we're at work, school, at home, and being able to have assistive de devices and just programs um, that are able to assist us can keep us on task and having alerts again that's also so important okay wendy i think uh we're going to go ahead mike's or heidi's going to get a little bit higher level technical support i can't figure out what the problem is either so i'm going to go ahead with my half of the presentation so uh okay. thanks everybody for their patience we're going to get going so um like i mentioned earlier technology is everywhere and lots of time people don't like uh, assistive technology or helpful aids or devices because it makes them look different. Um, so sometimes they like tools or aids that are part of products that we use every day that everybody uses. Um, so that has some real advantages in regards to normalizing uh, assistive technology. So when we can, 
we like to look for those tools. And what I'm going to go through today are some tools or features of Microsoft Office products uh, that, that uh, people with reading and writing challenges can make use of. Um, they're free and they're part of Microsoft Office like Word and OneNote and Outlook and PowerPoint, all common tools that everybody uses every single day. These are just features that you can turn on and make use of um, right away. So, all right, I see that we have a question. Okay, Chris, would you like to ask your question? Go ahead, Chris. It's about technology. I just got my my phone on Sunday and without my phone, I wouldn't be able to use it. Like for example, when you're at home by yourself, make sure that you have your phone with you and have it charged up overnight. Because if it's not charged up, it will uh, it will not work. You won't be able to call anyone or text anyone. So that's why you need to have a charger with you all the time. That's good advice, Chris. Yes, a lot of these tools, if, if they're not charged up, won't work. So keeping a charge is an important variable. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into the first tool that's called Immersive Reader. And let me open up um, a Microsoft Word document. All right. And zoom. Okay. So I've opened up Word, uh, Microsoft Word, in Office 2019. And what I'm gonna show you now is a feature called Immersive Reader. This is a new tool um, that's part of Word and other Microsoft products that I've mentioned today in regards to reading. So if I go to the View tab, I have my document open with some text here. And this um, is, is a lot of text. And for some folks, this may be challenging to read. So I'm gonna to go to Review or view, excuse me. And over here on the left, there's a tab called Immersive Reader. And I'm gonna click on that. And what this is going to do, it's gonna open up the, the document and the text in a new window that I'm gonna have a lot of control over in regards to what happens. So it processes it. All right. Now you'll see it took this same text and opened it into a window that I have some control over. So now um, I can have some options over what, how I hear the document and how I see it. So if I want to read this document, I can click on it. You may have read how Thomas Smith first farmed rice in South Carolina. After his death, a I can stop or I can start again. Wise young woman lived in South Carolina. She showed the people how to farm another plant. And as you see, as it's reading, it's highlighting the word, which is good because then I can make the connection between the word it's on and what I'm hearing. If I need the text a little bigger, I can adjust the size of the text and still read it. Plant. Her name was Eliza Lucas, the father of Miss Lucas. I can also increase the spacing on it, meaning put more space between the words if that helps me read it. I can adjust the font if there's a different font that's easier for me to read or even the color background. And there's a lot of different color options. Some folks with reading challenges read and see better from different color backgrounds. So there's some adjustment there. 
for reading preferences, I can also put some focus on the text that I'm seeing. So I can change it to a line focus, where now it will just focus on the line that I'm on at the moment. Lucas did not live in South Carolina. He was governor of one of the islands of the West Indies. Miss. Or I can adjust it for two lines or three lines. So it helps me focus in on the tasks that I'm, I'm reading at the moment. And if I want, I get out of it and I go back to my main document. So this is a way for folks with reading challenges to be able to have text read to them. So you might say, well, okay, this is all well and good. I like to read in documents, but a lot of times I need to read on the web. Well, it works in Microsoft um, uh, Edge, the browser as well. So if I open up a browser and let's say I have some text I need to have read, I can highlight it and then right click, open an immersive reader, and I get the same set of tools as I get before. Clayton, assistive technology at includes thousands of products that enable persons with disabilities to be more productive and independent in daily activities. Clayton, so sure, it sure. works across, plot, across platforms. All right, any questions about Immersive Reader? Okay, all right. Next, I'm gonna show you a tool that's um, useful for folks that have challenges writing. A lot of times folks don't like to write, particularly if it's difficult for them. Just getting their thoughts down is, is very hard. Many people like to be able to speak to get their thoughts out and have a much easier time putting things together if they can just talk and say what it is they want to say, as opposed to having to write it with a pen or a pencil or even type it out on a keyboard, which is challenging for some folks. If you can just get your thoughts out and get it down on paper, then you have something to work with um, in regards to uh, in in regards to creating text. So I'm gonna show you a feature called Dictate, which is also again, part of Microsoft Word. Um, that's a free feature that's, that's within um, Word. So I'm gonna open up a Word document, which I have here, and I'm just using the microphone on my webcam or on, on I could be using my laptop uh, microphone. I'm gonna go ahead and Click on Dictate, which is over here on the right-hand side. And now it's gonna start typing whatever I say, period. New paragraph. So, comma. I'm practicing dictating using the dictation feature in Microsoft Office Word, period. If I have a difficult time with writing, but speaking is easier for me, I can get my thoughts down on paper, period. Then comma, I can go back and listen to what I've written with Immersive Reader and then make edits, period. When I'm done, I can turn it off. So there I've gotten a lot of thoughts down that might have been very difficult for me to type out or to write. So it's a good way to get um, your information out so that you can start working with it in some format. All right, so next I'm gonna show you a feature called word prediction, which Clayton, is- Clayton, yes. real quick. We just had a quick question about uh, how to get to the dictate feature. Sure, dictate um, feature in Office 2019 or Office 365 um, is right when you open up Word. So when you open a Word document and you're on the home tab, I mean, I gotta move a couple things out of the way here, hold on.
And just to let you know on your screen right now, we're seeing the Zoom launch meeting uh, on the screen, not your. Okay, thanks for the cue. Yeah, sometimes I forget that I lose my screen share when you doesn't follow you. So uh, yeah. let, let me get back. We all do. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so you're seeing my screen again with the dictation? or with the, yes. with the text? Okay, so on the home tab, way over here on the right is dictate. And this, when you click on it, allows you to bring up the microphone and you'll hear the microphone beep. Now it's down here at the bottom, I have my microphone. I can place my cursor where I wanna begin. Now, comma, I can add text to this document, period. When I'm done dictating, I just click on the microphone again and it turns off. And now it's off and it's not transcribing what I'm saying. So it's right in, we're on the home tab on the right hand side. Okay, excellent question. Now I'm going to show you a feature called word prediction. And again, this is part of Word. It actually runs um, through uh, Windows and you need to have at least Windows 10, uh, a later version of Windows 10 to have this feature available. Um, and this is a new feature for Microsoft. It still is, is not that capable, but it's not bad. It's a, it's a good feature to know about in regards to writing. There are certainly better third-party versions of word prediction out there, but I want to show you this um, and uh, tell you how you can turn it on if you uh, are interested in it. So um, with word prediction, as I type, it will start predicting what it thinks I'm going to type. So I'm gonna say my, I can then select the word name is, and my proper name, it's not gonna, well, it did get, so Clayton. Okay, then I can do a period. So. Oh, uh, Clayton, I, I don't think the screen is showing what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was just gonna jump in. I was just noticing that too. <laughs> All right, so sometimes I think Maybe it is go. and it's not, so okay. So let's start over again. So my there you go. name is, and it's anticipating my next word based on the previous word. So my name comes up, I can select it. So folks with spelling challenges, sometimes if they can see the word, they can recognize it. So a word might misspell word. Well, I start spelling word like it sounds, W-U-R-D. Well, that's not right. Word comes up and now I can see word and it will change it. That I may have problems. Oh, problems comes up. I may have problems with that. So if your spelling is a little challenge, having the word prediction might help you identify the right word. And if it's the right word, Microsoft Word is gonna spell it correctly. So like I was saying, there are a lot more capable word prediction programs out there if you're interested in this, ones that will give you a definition of the word, use it in a sentence, let you hear the word out loud before you choose it. This does not have that capability yet, but it's a good starting place and it's free and there, and all you need to do is turn it on. So like I said, uh, this is a feature of Windows, and if, I don't expect you to remember this, but if you go to settings um, and devices under typing, then the hardware keyboard, you can show text suggestions as I type. And that's where you turn this on right here uh, under typing. 
um, in the settings. So if you just do a search for, uh, once you get to settings, if you do a search for typing, typing settings will bring it up. And then under hardware keyboards, you can turn that on. So that's another feature that you can turn on within uh, Windows that may aid in your writing. All right. Any questions about dictation or word prediction? All right, good deal. Next, I'm gonna show you um, a feature that uh, uses uh, apps uh, on an iPad or on an Android device. Uh, this is a feature called Microsoft Lens. And this app allows you to take a picture of print documents and have them read to you uh, through the immersive reader feature that we looked at a little bit earlier. So I'm going to stop my share here and I'm going to switch over to my iPad. Just a second. Okay. Let's see, it looks like you're muted, Clayton. Wendy, are you seeing my screen on my iPad? Um, it says it said you started screen sharing, but we're not seeing the iPad screen yet. It shows that there's an attempt to a connection. One thing I'll share with all of you that are here is, as you can see, um, technology okay, Wendy, can be are wonderful. Are you seeing it? I'm not hearing it. And then there are also other times when we can have technical issues. And, yeah. Wendy, um, are you seeing my screen on my iPad? Nope, not yet. Okay. It, it's, it still shows that you started screen sharing, um, and then it, it it's not showing the screen, however. It's okay. all black. Well, it won't. It says it's connecting, share content. Okay, how about now? Not yet, nope. Maybe try disconnecting screen, you know, turning off screen share and then back on again, because it never really did reset from the um, computer screen over to the iPad. Okay. Clayton, it looks like in the participants panel that you're sharing from your computer and your iPad at the same time. Maybe stop sharing from the computer side. Okay, I'll, I'll try that. All right, I'm getting back out and trying it again. We see your face from the iPad, so that's a good sign. Okay, good. No, that's from my webcam. And it's, I'm still not getting it. Clayton, do you want me to show my equipment while you're fixing that or? No. 
We, we also have somebody here in the chat that says that they had helped a student screen share on his iPad for Zoom and that they ended up watching a YouTube video and followed those directions. And it said something about enabling um, in settings. Um, well, I had this working earlier this morning. I tried it three times and it worked fine. Yeah. Now it is not. Thank you for the tips, Anthony. We appreciate that. <laughs> Steve Dudley says, gremlins are having fun today. You're absolutely right, Steve. <laughs> Now, okay, so I'm in the meeting. I'm sharing content. Steve says, we need to find out who's giving them the water after midnight. Midnight, Again, referring to the gremlins. Does anybody have any questions while we are working on this? Anything about what we've seen so far? Or again, if there's anything that you want to share, um, you are each, you know, your own experts in the technology that you're using and you guys could share with us also. I'm glad this is all being is very helpful for you, TJ. That's great. Well, I, I've tried everything I can think of. I don't, I don't know what the issue is. Um, at this point, why don't we just go ahead and let Heidi switch and mm -hmm. hopefully she's got her side working. So maybe I can figure mine out. So. Heidi, are you with us? I see you I just unmuted, so I know you're there. Excellent. Okay. All right, so we'll try this again. Again, thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, I'm going to first talk about a device called the LiveScribe Echo Smart Pen. And um, it, it is a pen, as you can see. I'm gonna turn it on. What's great about this pen is that it has a digital screen. I'll turn it this way. This device can be used all kinds of places. So let's say you're using it at school and then um, you graduate and you get a job and you wanna use it at work, you sure can. I've had people use it at doctor's appointments to take notes. So. It looks like an ordinary pen, but right here, this little dot, I don't know if I can get that into the picture, but there is a microphone and then also a speaker. Now, right here where the pen is, where the ink is showing, there's also a camera. And this camera plays a really important part because it's gonna go on special paper and As you can see on here, it says time, a date. I tap with that little point of the pen where the camera sees it, and it says Friday, November 13th. And I think that's why we have so many issues. It's Friday the 13th. But um, also in this special paper, I 
can put the time, I can do the battery status. I navigate by using these arrows. And I'm hoping you can hear that. Applications. So this paper replay is going to select all your main applications, all your um, main ideas, what you want. But what I want to do is really show you what this pen can do. So sometimes it's it's hard for us to take notes at the same time. I wish this pen was around back when I was in college. Um, with this paper, every sheet of LiveScribe paper, it, it's got unique pattern. And again, it's kind of hard to show it on here with the camera, but there's all kinds of digital dots. And with these digital dots, it's a unique pattern where the camera picks up. I'm going to write on here just to kind of show you examples. So if I was sitting in a meeting and let's say I said, okay, it's November 13th. Today, the meeting's going to start at nine and the meeting I'm going to show equipment. So with that equipment, it's going to be the Echo Smart Pen. I'm going to talk about OrCam Reader. Um, I'm just going to talk about several mice and laptop or uh, keyboards. After their meeting, I'm going to have a lot of things I got to do. I got to clean up. And all of a sudden, maybe my boss said, hey, we have an important meeting at five o'clock today. So make sure you do not miss that meeting at that five o'clock. So if this is at school and you're taking notes, as you see, I'm only taking, oh gosh, taking little several little notes here, right? I'm gonna flip this over because I did something wrong. This panel right here, you can see on here, it says record, stop, jumping, bookmarking, playback speed, and volume. So this is going to be an important process for you when you're taking notes. So again, I'm just going to start again. So let's say, again, I've got class. It's November 13th. My first class, it's going to be about history. So that maybe the, the teacher saying, you know, um, you know, President Lincoln was, was a great, great president. He did many things. He helped people. He, you know, he grew up in Illinois. Um, he statues and as you see i am not writing down everything and the teacher says you've got a test tomorrow at 9 a.m and you're thinking am i going to remember everything so now i'm going to go back and look at my notes and i am going to click on here Oh my gosh, everything is uh, not working today and I don't know why. So, Is this normally, Heidi, where when you click on the word, it'll then give you yeah, all of the yep. um, recording yep. of everything you wrote down and you get a yep. synopsis of all of what you said? So here's something yesterday that I had done. And, and so I'm going to click on here. So yesterday, we're going to click on, on to... Well, what the I word wrote. click isn't that accurate. Let's use the word tap. Because Tappy. you're tapping yep. the pen on the paper. Um, Oh, 
and we're not seeing your notepad right now. We're looking at the equipment, the black, you know. Okay. There All you right. go. So here's. On, on two. This might have gotten erased from yesterday too. So Heidi, I'm not sure that you you tapped record. I know I I but I did this time. Gosh, I really apologize. So All right. So this literally this pen, it if I do record, and we'll just do something simple, November 13th test, this will, um, you can just tap, tap the November word. November 13th test, this will. Uh... So it basically, if you're able to just take certain words and notes down then you will have this all tape recorded. You can plug in a headset for it and listen to it. You can pair it with your computer. So there's a lot um, of information that you can do with this. Um, and I guess too, what, you know, maybe Clayton and I wanted to tell you too, if there's any of this stuff that you want to check out for a couple of weeks and try, you can sure do that. This is the OrCam Reader pen. And as you can see, it's not much bigger than a normal pen. Sometimes people have um, a difficult reading, they get fatigued, they might have a visual, um, like a mild vision loss. Um, so I'm gonna show you this one where we're gonna turn it on. And when this light comes on, that means it's been powered up. It's very easy to use. It has only the four buttons. You um, charge it with USB charging. There's an area you can clip on a lanyard. And this too, you could plug in hand phone, uh, um, headphones and use it. It can also be paired to a Bluetooth speaker. This, um, this button is going to um, show a beam of light to get to the words. Read. Version 9 is ready. Battery is 95% charged. So I'm hoping you're able to hear that. There's a plus and minus on here as well. So here's an old paper and it's of course unfortunately with the cards lost. I don't, can you tell that there is a um, a, a beam of light on here. It's a square, it's red. Yes, we see it. Okay, great. Okay. So I can also do just a small version of this. And um, I know the microphone's a little bit a ways. So are you able to hear that from where the camera is? Yes, we were able to hear. Okay. So I paused it. It was in their heads and it wasn't going to be. When I can double click this. This button right here controls the camera. If I need to make it louder or softer, there's the plus minus. Um, it will save it. Maybe I just want a smaller area. Twenty four, Cardinals twenty one. 
cards blow as a show control. So it just did just a little area. You could do a whole book. You can go page to page. You can go from just a paragraph. You could also um, put this in if it's on um, the computer. It can also, you can just put it right on the computer um, and, and beam the light on it and it'll read it for you there as well. Um, this device helps a lot of times too if you've got dyslexia and it helps you read. Um, I, I've had um, a couple people using this now to um, help them with their classwork. So this is a, is a great device. And again, it's called the OrCam Read. And I know we're kind of uh, getting down to time here. Um, Clayton, do you want to just do the last two slides? You want me to show some mites or? No, let's go ahead and move on. So I'm going to make one more attempt to share my screen here. And so Heidi, can you stop sharing your screen, please? Or else uh, I don't see the um, share screen on for her. Okay. You should be ready to go, Clayton. Okay. I'm going to give her one more chance. If not, we're going to finish up. So. Yeah, we have just a few more minutes. And in the meantime, if you guys have questions that you want to put into the chat, feel free so that we'll have an opportunity to get to those. And Clayton will show his last couple of slides here and his work. Okay, well, fortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to get it to work. So we're going to go ahead and close today. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, just um, this not our day in regards to these, these options. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring back up my PowerPoint here. And, and uh, finish up. So Sometimes in life, things do not go as you need them to go. So, but it's moving on from it is what is important. So Heidi and I have showed you some simple tools today um, that, that people with disabilities or special challenges can, can use and work in school. So um, like I mentioned, assistive technology is really individualized and task or activity based. In regards to planning for it, it's never too early to start reviewing, discussing, or exploring your options. More information is better than less information. So focusing on the specific tasks to, to plan is, is again, really important. And you may need a range of tools or things for each specific task. Like I mentioned earlier, you may need one tool for reading things on the computer, and you may need one tool for reading something in print. Different same task, but different tools. So if if you're involved with um, a, a rehabilitation or an insurance provider, maybe with voc rehab or some similar program to assist you in returning or entering work, be sure to ask that assistive technology be included as part of your plan. Often, if you're not asking for it, it may not be considered. So that's important to bring up. If you need assistance in determining assistive technology that can help you, contact ASTAP. We're here to work with you or your family to make these kinds of decisions. And finally, this is our contact information. Um, we will provide this to Wendy, and Wendy has it, so she can make it available uh, to the participants. Heidi, uh, could you type in our phone number and our email and website maybe into the chat window uh, so folks can uh, uh, cut and paste that if they would like? 
and take that down. So we're available by, by phone, by, by email, through our general email inbox here, and our website. Um, and there's our address. So uh, with that, we're right at an hour. Um, are there any final questions? Clayton, I have one question. I know that when you were um, going over the information a little bit ago, you had said that folks are able to also acquire loaners in order to try out for a period of time technology to see if it's something that will work for them. How is it that that happens? Do they make contact with you folks or is there a different agency for that? No, um, we do lend uh, all different types of assistive technology for people to try wherever it is they need to use it, whether that's home, work, or school. Um, they can contact us directly and make an equipment request. Uh, and we ship equipment around the state. Um, and uh, we ask that people sign a borrow agreement to borrow equipment. But we try to make it as easy and as user-friendly as possible. So yes, we do give people the opportunity to borrow items to try. Great, thank you very much. I appreciate that. No problem. Um, let me see, I'm looking here to see if we have other questions. It looks sure. like, you know, all of your contact information has gone up. I don't see any other questions. If folks want to raise their hands real quick instead of use the chat, if that's easier for you, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, Brian is asking if you could show how to use the immersive reader again. Um, do if, if folks need to log off, given that we are ending at 10, if you have other meetings to go to, we have, totally understand that. Um, and Rita, you know has, interpreters uh, are here. Rita has raised her hand. I'm going to ask okay. her to go ahead, Rita. Hi. Yeah, I was just wondering um, for the app that Queen wanted to show us, the one that allows us to take pictures of printed documents and have them um, read to us. I was wondering if you could at least like have the name of that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's called Office Lens. Um, if you uh, search for it. Here, I can, I can do a basic uh, demo of it really fast um, uh, with my webcam. Hold on just a second. It's not near. It's not going to be near the quality of what I could do if I could show my iPad screen, but um, let me. Uh... And, you know, everybody, too, if you wanted to do a separate you know, individual meeting with us, we can always do that as well. We can set up a time to work with you on, on something that, that you saw today, or if you see something in our loan library that you wanna look at in more detail, you can contact us. Okay, all right. So now sharing my uh, screen, Is everybody seeing my iPad? We're seeing the Aztec contact information uh, slide. I'm not sure. I stopped sharing that screen. Um, okay, now we're seeing out. an active. Now we're seeing emails and. All right, you're getting it. Okay, so. There you go. We can see the iPad now. Do you see the iPad? Okay. Yes. All right, so. Um, Office Lens uh, is the app right here, and I'm going to go ahead and open it, and I'll take a, a text document. Here's a document with a lot of text on it, and it's a, it's a text that I was using an immersive reader, and uh, what I do is I will open up the Office Lens app, and using, I will take a picture, this is lousy, and what it will do is it will OCR the, 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 the text, and I'll just, I confirm that's a picture that I want to use, I'm done, and then I will open it in Immersive Reader, 
and it's going to um, transfer everything that I took a picture of into text. And you'll see that it looks a lot like uh, what I had before uh, when I was an immersive reader in Windows. Now I can have it read. A wise young woman. You may have read how Thomas said first far right. So what it'll do, it'll take that text from the print, transfer it into a new window, and then I have the same controls for spacing and size and font and color and reading uh, that I had before, so. All right, everybody, thank you very much. Uh, were there any additional questions? If not, Heidi and I are done, so. I just wanted to say thank you for showing that. That was very useful. No problem, glad to do it. And if you have any other follow-up questions with anything we've shown today, please contact us uh, through one of the means uh, through the contact information. Excellent. Thank you so much. We appreciate um, Heidi and Clayton for being here and assisting and showing us all this valuable information. Um, and yeah, maybe in the future we'll be able to arrange something. I think some others had um, asked about, um, you know, certain technology, maybe we would be able to connect in the future um, and do another one. Um, so thank you all for being here and for uh, staying a little extra and for your patience and working with us um, today. And we'll see you hopefully for our upcoming uh, webinars in the future. Um, we will be sending out evaluation uh, links to each of the participants that were here today. Um, you will find an evaluation um, available for youth and then there will be an evaluation link for um, adults. And we ask that you please complete that in order to be able to help us to be able to improve and do all that we can in order to be able to make sure that we're continuing to offer you helpful information. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff, for your assistance and to the interpreters and again, Clayton and Heidi.